Like it's actually kind of ridiculous how hard these are. Go for Jenny. I'm a gopher really don't know what I'm talking about. Hey guys, I'm back and today I'm really excited because I get to film a video that wasn't planned to be filmed for like another two or three weeks and that's good news, she says, staring shocked into the camera. Basically, I pre-ordered the new LOL OMG Dance 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 dolls along with four of the small balls and the car, which I ended up removing because they didn't offer free shipping on it, which sounds ridiculous because it is, especially considering my order was almost $300 and they offer free shipping for any order over 35 bucks. So is like, hmm, pass. And basically, I don't have to get all that stuff anymore, or at least part of the order, because I found these dolls at Walmart for $39, woo, each, sorry, each in Canada, which is about $168 after tax. And I know they're available at Target and Walmart and such, and on Amazon if you're in the States for about $25 pre whatever your taxes are, or at least they will be as of March 1st. But I do know that some places have gotten them early, which is what inspired me to take to the street essentially, not really, and find these dolls. So if you're interested in seeing the car review and you aren't already subscribed to the Great Big Toy Box channel, I will leave a link in the description for you to check it out. Subscribe, I'm great, that was rude. I think the reviews are great, and if you like them, you might enjoy that channel. That's what I'm getting at. Right. But as for today, we are gonna be checking out all four of the brand new LOL OMG Dance 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 dolls. And that includes Bee Girl. She's the older sister of Beats. I've also got Major Lady here, who is the older sister of Stardust Queen. Miss Royale, who is Royal Heine's older sister. And lastly, I have Virtuelle. And I'm so excited for this. In fact, I wanted to do this whole deja vu type video since I had one a few years back where I was on the hunt for VR Cutie. She was freaking adorable and I wanted her so bad, but it took a little bit to get her. And as soon as I saw advertisements that Virtuelle was gonna be joining the OMG line, I was really excited and knew that I would have to find her. And lucky for us, she is not a blind item. I know exactly what I'm getting, which is one of the reasons I prefer these to the small dolls, plus all the extra fashions and the fact that they're way more useful. And also really excited that I don't have to hunt during a pandemic, not safe. So let's just pretend I've already scoured the earth and came across her by pure happenstance. Is that a phrase? I don't know. I feel like I heard it before, so we're going with it. Wow! Look at this doll I found by pure happenstance. <gasps> I'm so excited! I look like a psycho. So let's get started with Virtuelle. Oh my gosh, her box is hollow and beautiful. But that's not what we're here for. We are here to look at the box, which is hollow, and it looks like an old TV. On the back, it looks like a TV guide. And then, of course, the packaging looks like the back of a TV, which is really cool. We've got like the different little auxiliary ports and such like that, even HDMI. So really, how old is it? Not. <laughs> Lastly, we have four mini TVs showing all four dolls in this collection. So on channel five in the pink TV, we have Miss Royale. Channel six has a yellow TV with Major Lady. Channel seven has a blue TV with Bee Girl. And lastly, we have Virtuelle in a green TV on channel eight. Oh, and last, lastly, we have a really cool pattern on top of different colored blocks, which also includes Hollow. All the boxes for all four dolls are the exact same, excluding, of course, the artwork on the front of the actual doll you're getting and the doll's name along the right side of the box. It's really the contents on the inside that are gonna differ, which means we no longer have to look at packaging. We just get to open. So I'm gonna be skipping that for each subsequent doll we look at. So let's switch down to the table and check everything out up close. Before I open the box, I'm just gonna quickly show you all four dolls side by side together once more, just because I think they're gonna pop better underneath these bright lights, as opposed to when I was sitting on the chair. And also, now that they're all together, I can see that each box has a different colored set of knobs. So Major Lady has yellow, Miss Royale has pink, Virtuelle has green, and Bee Girl has blue. Instead of opening one by one and wasting time, I'm just gonna go ahead and prep all four boxes by removing the plastic band that's holding them in. And it's really simple to open these, all we have to do is turn it around and either cut or peel away the tape that's holding everything together. If you choose to cut, make sure you don't scratch the box, especially if you want to display it. And if you choose to peel away the tape, just make sure it doesn't peel away any of the image. All four dolls have been de-plasticed and of course I've saved everything for crafting. I highly recommend you do the same if you're a crafter because these make perfect windows. And now we open, starting of course with Virtuelle. So on the back of the box, there is a little black pull tab, which we freed by removing the plastic. 
and if we pull this out, it would open up the doll on the opposite side. But before we do that, there's one extra feature that they've given us on this box, and I'm not sure whether or not you can see it, but there are perforated lines along the edge of the TV screen. And if we pop those open, we've got a really cool feature inside and a little plastic tab with arrows. And if we pull it, it looks like our doll is dancing. I can't see it very well. To be honest, I'm pretty sure it's reflecting my shirt for you guys, as well as all the lights, but either way, this is very cool. Now, as you might have noticed, I did leave part of the perforated edge intact, essentially creating a hinge. That way, I can close it back up and display it in any way I choose. And now we can pull that little tab on the side and check out Virtuel. I'm like so excited. Oh, she's so bright. Oh, look at that background. Oh, her hanger thingy is falling out. And if we pull everything out, come on, come on. There we go. We've got our manual slash instructions and an amazing backdrop. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the camera, but it's actually reflective and kind of metallic looking too. Or that could just be a trick of the lights. Either way, it looks fabulous and I love it. And for some reason, it reminds me of much music, which is a really Canadian thing to say. And technically it looks nothing like it. So I don't know why I said it. So let's just ignore Jen and put that to the side and add in the little base that comes underneath our doll's feet to complete the scene. It's very vapor wavy, I'm feeling it. In addition to the awesome backdrop, we do of course get our doll and her accessories. First up we have our dance guide in place of a magazine and Virtuelle is on the front. Inside it says loading, loading Virtuelle, robot grooving fashion glow. And if we open it up one more time, we have steps one, two, and three for a new dance move. That's actually really cute. To check out the rest, we're gonna need to snip some jibbers. So here she is straight from the package. She looks absolutely adorable. And of course she does come fully dressed and we'll check that out in just a second because first we need to address her bright, beautiful hair and all this makeup. It looks adorable and I'm really excited by it because I'm not sure if you guys are able to tell or not, but there's two different textures going on here. I'm gonna try to show you. So for the most part, the majority of her head is in hot pink twists, but she's also got streaks in the form of white and pink braids and those are interspersed throughout her head, which is really, really nice. And of course, if we separate it, you will definitely see a lot more bald spots because adding twists and braids is not exactly the same process as it would be for straight up rooted hair, but the scalp is painted pink. So assuming we have it nicely covered, you would never be able to tell. Now for her makeup, I have to say, I love this pixelated look and the colors they've chosen not only match the outfit completely, but also complements her chocolate brown skin complexion. So she's got green eyes, purple lipstick and eyebrows, which are pixelated, and some pixelated eyeshadow in pink, yellow, and green. And of course she wouldn't be an LOL doll if she didn't have massive lashes. Just like every other OMG doll, she has the same points of articulation that you would expect. So that would be the shoulder, elbows, and wrists, as well as, of course, her head, her hips, and has a bend and snap knee, which you can't really see through her pants. She's just so cute. And I do love her outfit. She comes wearing a yellow, black, and pink shirt. The bottom portion is black with little blue and white squares and says extra across the chest. And the upper portion is a yellow mesh with hot pink sleeves and a collar. And then for bottoms, she's got black shorts underneath split pink pants and some high top black boots. The entire look is very vibrant and super cute, definitely complimentary her skin complexion, like I said, and matches her makeup. I love the overall appearance of everything, but sadly I am noticing a few flaws already, like her shirt here, which unfortunately has the mesh section pulled too far to the left, which makes it asymmetrical. And we also have some thread hanging off. I'm assuming, hopefully, that I'll be able to add a couple stitches underneath the collar on the right side to pull the mesh up, and maybe just zhuzh the shirt off to the right a bit to make it look more centered, and then hopefully I'll be able to ignore it and retrain my brain. That kind of sucks. Now moving to the back, just for a quick peek, we'll open the one piece of Velcro that's holding it together and check to see if everything else looks good. And the answer is yes. Ooh, look at that. They've gone ahead and switched the stamped code to just underneath her arm instead of in the center of her back. I wonder why they changed that. When did they change that? To be fair, I forgot to open my winter disco dolls, so maybe they already did that in the past and I'm just late to the party. So it looks like it's only the one thing on the front, which is unfortunately 
apparently what everybody sees, but nothing more. Which means we can move on to the rest of her body. So I'm gonna pull off her boots. Oh, wow, I didn't expect for her to be wearing socks underneath her boots. Okay, so let me pull off the pants so we can see those better. Here they are. They're black knee highs with a bright yellow circuit pattern all over. And I have to say, I want these in real life. <laughs> Moving on to her shorts, they're all black and they match her shirt, except this time with white and pink squares and tiny arrows for the pattern and two fake pockets made out of blue zippers in the front. And underneath, she's got a painted on pair of purple underwear. For her pants, she's essentially wearing a very bright pink shimmery pair of chaps, which means that it's technically two separate legs and they're only attached by the waistband in the back and this blue transparent buckle in the front. And because it's wide open, I can actually see that everything is stitched together pretty nicely, excluding her left leg. I'm not sure if you guys could really tell. I'll have to show you once I put it back on the doll, but essentially the fabric has been cut a little wonky, meaning the seam here is more so exposed on the front instead of hidden at her thigh like it should be. And sadly that results in her pocket being almost completely behind her and it will actually end up being slightly turned in and hidden between her thighs. Whereas the right leg is perfect and the pocket's gonna be where it's meant to. Also, these pockets are totes real. Not very big, we're not gonna be able to stick anything in there, but still very, very real and I'm excited about that. So I'm gonna quickly put these back on and show you the wonky left leg. So the seam is actually on the front and the pocket is on the back and slightly turning inward. But we can actually turn it a bit so we can get away with hiding that defect a lot better than we can with the chest piece. Lastly, we have her boots, which are super tall and black with pink and blue designs and a large chunky yellow heel. And that's it for her for now. So let's set her off to the side and make her doll stand. But this looks different than what we've had in the past. This part still looks the same. It's a dark gray, pearly metallic base with little studs along the side but instead of having the platform on the bottom where we could either let our doll sit or display a bag or something, it's got a waist hugger. But there were also two more inside the plastic. These ones appear to be the same size, but we also have a third one, which is wider. So I'm not sure if this is just gonna be allowing us to pose her in different positions so it looks like she's dancing or what. And I just checked the instructions and it doesn't say anything other than to attach it to the top as we would have in the past. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I I guess we'll just figure it out as we go if I didn't put it on backwards. Nice. All right, that's better. Until I figure out what these are for, I'll just leave them off to the side. And in the meantime, we can add our doll. I am using the biggest one right now just to see what happens. And the answer is it holds her in place, but it is loose. Ooh, maybe it's to hold her lower down like that. I mean, technically it works. So I think I'm just gonna leave her like that for now and we'll move on to her accessories. Starting with the hat box, which is the exact same as every other one we've had, except this one is a solid teal color. And inside her green and black tissue paper, we have her accessories. Ooh, which includes two pixelated yellow heart dangly earrings and a really cool looking visor. It's black plastic at the top with little silver rivets and has a lenticular screen, which is also holographic. And we can see through it just enough to make it cool. So let's add those to our doll. There we go. Earrings on, super cute. Uh. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of weird. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like they've put the arms upside down on my visor. It's more likely that they would work like that. She's like Jordi LaForge, but cooler. I wonder if I can change it. Can I pop it off? Oh, I can. Hold on. I'm gonna try. Let's perform some doll magic here. Hopefully I don't break anything. Oh, wait. Is that as far as I can get it off? So it looks like the two inner second studs have a little piece of plastic on either side that prevents them from popping off easily. But the center one sorta of does. So if I squish over and carefully pull, we might make some headway. <gasps> I did it, awesome. Okay, let's just flip that around and then reattach it. And there we go. Now hopefully things work a lot better. Round two, visor. There we go. Maybe, hold on, is that on her ear? I don't think so, hold on. Where the heck is her ear? Where is her ear? One is exposed and the other's not. Okay, there you go. It is technically on. It's easier to find her right ear than it is to find her left because they have chosen to root the hair further down the side of her cheek, 
blocking her ear, which actually makes for a really cute overall appearance, but a little tricky when trying to attach a Geordie LaForge, not so Geordie LaForge scientific visor that serves no purpose other than to look cool. But at least it is facing the right direction. Yes. Except now that I'm focusing on only what's visible, I have to say her eyebrow is freaking me out. Forget about Geordie. I've decided she's half human, half Vulcan. Okay, <laughs> let's just take that off. So I'm just gonna leave those over there with the black light and we'll move on to her garment bag. And this one's all black and has a multicolored equalizer pattern going across the entire thing. So I've seen people rip these open in the past and it bothers me so much because you can definitely reuse them. So don't do that guys, don't do that. Inside we've got a hot pink hanger and a jacket. And this one is a gray faux leather with neon green thread, a hot pink collar, a plastic zipper in the front with some super shiny and crinkly green sleeves. And everything inside looks like it's stitched together really nicely. So I'm gonna pop off her hands so we can try that on her. And then of course, give her her hands back. And the only reason I take these off is to make it easier to dress her since the sleeves are super tight and also to prevent anything from ripping inside if her fingernails catch. And we'll also pop her visor back on. That way we can see what everything looks like together. Ooh, actually, if I stick it above the hair a bit more, it looks even cooler and covers more of her eyes and more importantly, her freaky eyebrow. All right, so I've got her in her display for the first time. It looks so, so cute. And I assume everything is gonna pop and shine really nicely under the black light, but we're not gonna know that until we finish opening the dolls because I'm gonna test them all at once. So let's move on to Major Lady. So all we need to do is open the perforated area on the front and give her a try. How come we can see her better? Is it because of her orange hair? Is it the yellow background? I don't know, but this looks cool. But just like before, I've left a hinge of the perforated cardboard, so I'll be able to close it and display it however I choose. And now, the actual doll. Wow, check it out. This is what everything looks like before you take it out of the package. And here's the inside of her display. It's all orange with lights all over the back wall and it looks like they're in the shape of a star. There's also a lightning bolt covered in lights, hanging disco balls, a set of black and white stairs and a bit of red sequins along the bottom. And that matches the platform base under the doll's feet. Let's pop that back there. We're slowly building a scene. What, what? Then of course we have our doll and all her accessories. First up is our dance guide with Major Lady on the front. Inside it's all yellow and it says, dance BB dance, fly BB fly. And then there's Major Lady looking like she's got some fabric wings. And then if we open it one more time, there's three new steps for another dance move. And of course the back says, LOL, OMG, dance, dance, dance. And now the rest. Just like before, I'm gonna take everything out of the package so we can look at it all at once. And just like that, she is free and she is so stinking cute. Honestly, she was the one I was least excited for just based on the artwork. But as I've noticed in the past, sometimes the artwork is not as great as the final product. So here I am surprised. So this is Major Lady. She has a light skin complexion and brightly painted orange nails, which match her shoes or super high groovy boots, shall I say, and her hair, which is pulled up into a high pony with a nice wrap around, making it nice and smooth, excluding this spot here. It is a mix of various oranges and you can definitely tell the difference between the front portion and the back. It's darker underneath. And then in the front she has two very long highly product wavy bangs that sit alongside her cheeks and sort of block her eyeballs. But if we move those out of the way we will be able to see her face. And you might have noticed that she has two different colored eyes. It's almost like she's a husky. The right is blue and the left is green. And her eye shadow is pink on top and green on the bottom. On her cheeks she has a light dusting of red and it sort of contours up her cheekbone and then her lipstick is a corally glitter color and it matches her eyebrows which by the way are straight and not freaking me out the outfit she comes wearing is also two different colors the right is blue and glittery and the left is a black and silver pinstripe it crisscross halters around her neck leaving a diamond shaped opening in her front where we can see her belly button and both sides split at the knee fanning out in the back which allows us to see 
see her tall orange boots with hints of silver, pink, and dark orange. And on the insides, where no one can really see, we have a long silver zipper. So I'm gonna take everything off so I can quickly check for any quality issues. So far, there's a lot of glitter falling off of her boots, which I kind of expected since there is glitter. And when it comes to her clothing, as long as it's not as problematic as Virtuelle's, I'm pretty much guaranteeing I'll be okay with it. So here we go, this is what hers looks like. It's actually really good. I don't see anything wrong. There's one long piece of thread there, but when I give it a tug, it's staying, so it is held in place. Meaning Jen is a happy camper. Underneath, by the way, she is wearing silver underwear. She does have the same articulation, hands, wrists, elbows, shoulders, head, leg joint there, and the bend and snap knee. But at this point, we know what kind of articulation they have, so I'm gonna stop pointing it out because it's just gonna get repetitive and you're gonna be bored. So instead, I'm gonna dress her back up and we can move on to her accessories. Man, I really do like this outfit. I thought that it was gonna be too dark for her based on the artwork since her complexion is so fair, but it's really, really working. When I wear something super dark, I just look washed out like I need some sun. <laughs> so the back of the halter goes together with Velcro, but the lower half has a little plastic snap buckle. All right, so let's give her back her boots and then I'll just set her off to the side and get her stand ready. Now, just like before, we do have three pieces for the stand, but I'm gonna go with what I know, especially since the biggest one only fits around their calves and I didn't like it that much. Also, there's nowhere to stick this one underneath, so that's kind of weird. And there is Major Lady. Honestly, I really do like her and she doesn't have anything that I've noticed so far that's super defective other than her hair coming out of the ponytail, not a big deal, and of course, loss of glitter. One thing I'm not super excited about though is her pants. Right now they're sort of just like wrinkly as heck and blowing away as if I've got a fan on her. It doesn't look all that great, especially since they are taller than her boots. But I know that they do stretch and that it looks really nice if I were to pull it out. So maybe if I gave them a light ironing between another fabric, it would look good. I'm not sure, I'll have to give it a try. But other than that, I really like her. So let's move on to see what else she comes with to complete her look. Once again, we have a hairbrush and I kind of forgot to show it, but Virtuelle's was yellow and hers is blue. And then we have her hat box, which is red with yellow and black tissue paper inside. And for her accessories, Oh, there we go. We get a silver plastic belt with blue stars and a buckle. And that's what it looks like when it's on. And she also comes with some earrings. One is a silver lightning bolt and the other is three dangling stars, which totally matches her mix match look. Now, Melissa from my world told me that she was getting certain kiss vibes from looking at this doll and that it totally slipped her mind that it should have been David Bowie vibes. I won't lie to you, I'm not getting any vibes from this doll because honestly, other than a few songs that I've heard on the radio over the years, those are not my specific go-to music genres. So I wouldn't identify or recognize any of the similarities between those artists or bands and this doll. Don't hate me, I'm sorry. It's not the music I grew up with. Next up, we have a very large chunky orange bangle. It kind of just looks like a pony bead, <laughs> except to my great delight, we also have a random wave of hot pink glitter. And I don't know if it's meant to go on any specific hand, but I'm just gonna put it on her right one. The last two items are her black light, which we won't be using until later, and her sunglasses, which are blue plastic with embedded silver glitter and shaped like two giant stars. And I'm really excited that the arms are in the right direction to actually go over her ears. In the artwork, they have them on her head, but I'm gonna try it on her eyes first. So here's what she looks like with them on her eyes. I think Trey cute, but maybe if we try them up here, we'll be able to hide the not so nice looking ponytail. <gasps> awesome, it's like it doesn't have a problem. Excellent, ooh, she almost fell again. Which waist hugger do I use? Oh my gosh, as I was saying, awesome. This is the new place that they will forever sit. Perfect, so that's what she looks like for now. But of course we do have one more accessory to open, which is in this super wavy black, pink and silver garment bag. And inside we have an aqua hanger, once again with a bust, so we can put clothes on there and have them hold their shape. And then we have a cape. And for the most part, it is silver. So this lower fabric portion is pleated and it's nice and soft, but a little crunchy. And then the upper portion, which forms the shoulders and collar, is both metallic blue and glittery silver. And it opens at the front with one piece of Velcro. Inside, it looks like it's stitched together really nicely. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but there's also two clear straps here. So I wonder if we're supposed to put 
it on her arms, making sure that it doesn't completely rotate around her body. And then on the back, everything heads downwards to form a point. And then there's a large glittery red lightning bolt in the center and a little piece of thread that is annoying me. So I'm going to snip it. It wasn't unraveling or anything, so that's good. So I'm going to add this last accessory to our doll and I'm going to stick her arms through those straps because I think we're supposed to. It's like a jacket. Yeah, they definitely fit and I didn't even have to take her hands off. All right, I was going to say, and here's what she looks like on her doll stand, but unfortunately you can't really pop the cape behind her over the back because it just poofs up. So you'd have to actually stick that inside the waist portion, but at least then it makes it fan out. But once you do have her situated, she looks like a rock and roll bat. And that's what she looks like in her display box. Super cute. She looks like she is in love with two-tone colors and living to be part of the marching band. Now that we're done with Major Lady, we can move on to our next doll, and it's gonna be Bee Girl. Starting, once again, with her screen. Oh, she's so cute! She looks like she's playing soccer, but also rocking out, like, yeah, yeah. I think it's just because her leg is up. Ignore me. Let's push that closed, turn it, pull the tab, and see our doll. <gasps> I love her! So let's pop her out of her display box and see what she's hiding back there. It kind of looks like either a straight-up apartment or a dance studio. It's hard to say because it looks like there's a dance bar across the window there, but other than that, it's just a blue room with two big windows. You can see the city outside, and then we've got a little bit of graffiti. It says Star and Bee Girl. Then we've got some wood paneling along the bottom and two fluorescent lights up top. So that's what makes me think it's a dance studio, but I could be wrong. Although, once we add her wooden base, it definitely looks more like a dance studio, so I could be right. You never know. Just like before, I'm going to pop everything out and we can look at it all at once. There we go. She looks like she's ready to play soccer still and that's completely okay. Wait a minute, is she wearing underwear? What? Okay, I got distracted. Hold on. I saw fabric under there. Okay, that's a big deal. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first up, we need to get through the other stuff. So here is Bee Girl. She has a light brown skin complexion and really loves the colors of black and white. That is, of course, excluding her hot pink panties. <laughs> Her hair is parted in the center and has two braids on either side. It's both black and silver. When it comes to her face and makeup, everything here looks really nice. We've got some painted edges on her forehead and they're black with little white highlights, which makes it look like they have some shine to them. She's got dark brown eyes, bold black mascara, some silvery eyeshadow, blushing on her cheeks, and a white line across the left one. And for her lipstick, she's wearing a dark, dark purple. Just like the other dolls, she does come wearing clothes already and hers is a two-piece set which includes black shorts that have two white stripes on the right leg and mesh with two white stripes on either side and then she's got the word slay in pink at the center of her waistband she's also wearing a black crop top that matches it's got two straps which are black white and silver and then there are two silvery white bands that go underneath her bust and one of my straps is sewn slightly off to the side so it keeps falling but that's not a big deal what I care about is the stitching so I'm gonna take a quick peek. It opens at the back with one piece of Velcro and everything inside looks really good, which is great. And as we saw, she comes wearing underwear. What is this noise? Everybody said they couldn't wear underwear and yet here we are. So if we pull down her shorts, well, hold on, pulling a Pamela over here. If we pull down her shorts, you can see that she's wearing high-waisted Baywatch panties. They do definitely wrinkle as they go inside the grooves for her leg because of course she's articulated. But guys, she's wearing panties and I'm loving it. That should be my thumbnail. She's wearing panties and I'm loving it. Could you imagine? Oh gosh, let's not do that. Everything inside the shorts is stitched together really nicely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those back up, but I'm gonna leave the band exposed just above her shorts there because I feel like it's supposed to be since she's essentially a break dancer. I feel like the slouchy look really goes, which means we can move on to her boots and socks. So I'm gonna take one off so we can see it. She does come with super tall white boots. They have a long black heel and black stripes going across them. And as you may have noticed, I pulled off her sock and their black fishnet knee highs with two white stripes around the top. So now I'll just pop her on her stand and we can move on to her accessories. Which stand is it gonna be? I don't know. I'm still confused by this. I'm gonna go with the smallest one. There you go. We can move on to her accessories. All right, so I've put her on her stand and I'm gonna set her out of the way for a few minutes while we check out her accessories, starting with her dance guide. We can see her picture 
picture on the front and inside it says B-Girl, power moves, break it down. And then we see a picture of her dancing. Opening it again, we see three steps to complete her dance moves. And then the back is blue and says, OMG, dance, dance, dance with the barcode. Here's her hairbrush, it's silver. And once again, it's gonna go unused because I don't plan on taking out their hair, which means we can move on to her hat box. And it's a bright pink with blue tissue paper inside. And for her accessories, we get two large silver hoop earrings, a super thin pair of upside down trapezoid shades, and they have a silver underframe. So let's pop in her earrings. This one doesn't fit and it's about to break. Oh, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. No, please stand by. All right, I took this one out to see what the difference was. And basically the part that goes inside her ear is completely solid here. There's no little grooves or anything. Whereas this one has a whole bunch of little grooves and it was very, very malleable. So it basically snapped as soon as I tried to put it in. I don't know what I'm gonna do. The rest of the little post just fell off completely. Maybe I can stick this little jibber bit in for now. Nope, <laughs> she's going solo today. She's got one earring. What am I gonna do? Can I replace this post somehow? Like there's a little stud on this side and I wouldn't wanna ruin that or damage the rest of it. If you have suggestions, please message them below because I'm super sad right now. How cute was that? Now how less cute is it, you know? So let's just put that down and add her sunglasses instead. And look how adorable she is. See, look, this is what she would have looked like, but instead this is what she looks like. Like, uh, it's not the same. Moving on, uh, we'll check out her last accessory and hope that we have better luck. This one is really big. It's the first big bag that we've had. It's all silver and it's got the word dance written all over it in pink, black, blue, and white. Inside, she's got a hot pink hanger, no plastic bust, and a jacket, and it feels like Gore-Tex. It reminds me of Seinfeld. Oh my gosh, how lame is that to say? It feels like Gore-Tex. It's a Gore-Tex jacket. <laughs> So it's a silver jacket, it's very shiny and reflective. In fact, it is hollow, so when we shift it under the lights, you can see the different colors of the rainbow. At the front, we have two long black ribbons on either side of the chest that say LOL OMG. Then we've got a long zipper going from the top of the collar all the way to the bottom, and then there's a little zipper pull. And at the bottom of the sleeves, we have some hot pink cuffs, which match the interior of the jacket. But I'm also a little confused by the interior of the jacket because it is literally stitched together so perfectly that I'm thinking it might be reversible. Especially since usually when they have a jacket or a sweater that has a liner inside, it's got a cut off at the sleeve where you'd be able to see the separation and this time it doesn't. So I'm wondering if it's reversible. It could be the pop of color she needs. Also, there's an awful lot of effort put into the inside where nobody would see if it wasn't reversible because it's got graffiti all over. It says B girl, up, swerve, drop, ricochet, pivot, jump, drop, wiggle, Peace, shuffle, dance. And I think there's one or two I missed there. So honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is probably reversible. <laughs> Technically, you could always wear your clothes inside out if you didn't care about people seeing the straps. The only difference is you won't have the ribbon. So I'm gonna put it on her in pink. Let's quickly see what that's like. Heck yeah, bud. Oh my gosh, it sounds so Canadian. Heck yeah, bud. Look at that, she's so cute. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, her nails are painted as well. They are alternating shades of silver and black, which I bet you would never have guessed based on the rest of her outfit. So the other arm is in, she just needs her hand, and look at that, she's good to go. Now we've got an accent color of silver. You know what, I'm leaving it like this. This makes me happy, especially since her earring failed me. Okay, so I've rearranged things a little, that way we have some space. And as you can see, there's only one doll left to open, which is of course Miss Royale. So let's just do that. So we'll start with her screen, there we go. She's looking very renaissance and Victorian, except not at all because they were way more modest. But of course I could be wrong, so let's just give it a pull and see what she's like in person. Ooh, very pretty. I definitely think her artwork looks better in this case than the actual doll because it's very hard to pull off the look they're going for with the hair, but she is super cute. So if we pull her out, this is what her background looks like and I love it. Oh my gosh. It's got a very Marie Antoinette feel to it. It's green with gold filigree and designs on the wall. There's neon pink writing that says, let them dance up top. There's a hanging hot pink chandelier here. We've got a marble column and bust of a doll's face. Black and white marble along the bottom flooring. 
a hot pink carpet, and then there's a doorway with pink curtains that leads to another room with pink and black tile floor. Then of course we have one extra piece that was underneath the doll, which will give us more marble flooring and a pink carpet. So I've added it to the back, and now we've got the scene set for my last doll. So I'll quickly get everything out and we can take a look. Okay guys, bear with me, we are just about finished because here is Miss Royale. She's out of the package and she's ready. And as you can see, she's the only one of the four dolls to come wearing a dress, or at least what appears to be a dress upon first glance. But we're gonna check that stuff out in just a second because first we need to check out her hair, which seems to be made out of yarn or wool. And it's in a nice pastel shade of bluish purple and pink, which is separated at the back into two ponytails, which are then further separated into two braids braids that are heavily product at the bottom. Like it's actually kind of ridiculous how hard these are. Wait, listen. Can you hear that? That's crazy. I'm like a foot and a half away from her. Back at the front, we have a series of five knotted buttons, which are framing her face. The largest is in the top center, and then there are two small ones on either side. When it comes to her face and makeup, everything looks pretty good. She's got big blue eyes, super dramatic black lashes, bright yellow eyeshadow with a bit of extra liner, a matte pink lipstick, light blushing on her cheeks, and lastly, a cute little black heart underneath her left eye. And and although you may be able to see a little bit of a pattern going across the bridge of her nose there, that's meant to be one of the black light features. So we're gonna pretend it's not even there and move on to her outfit, which consists of this hot pink petticoat or cage skirt, hoop skirt, caged petticoat, caged paneer, whatever you call it. I'm not really caught up on my Renaissance couture, unfortunately. So if you know the name of it, feel free to leave it down below for me. But what I do know is it opens at the front and has little silver buckles and rivets. And if we take it off, we'll discover that the outfit we thought was a dress is actually a two-piece set, which consists of a light purplish blue shiny skirt that has mesh over top of a holographic fabric in the front with four tiny black bows and a matching off the shoulder top that has two black straps. So it's got the same colored shiny fabric, three small bows going down the front, and then two small bows at the arms, one at the shoulder and the other at the elbow, which then leads into a two layered puffy sleeve made of a sheer white fabric with neon yellow at the bottom. And this opens at the back with one piece of Velcro and everything inside looks really good. And the skirt also opens at the back and looks good inside. Moving down to her legs, she also comes wearing some long black over the knee stockings with a yellow ruffle on top and painted white bows going up the back calf. And lastly, she has some very tall hot pink wedged heels that have pink straps all over the bottom a black strap around the ankle, and finally a little white bow and buckle at the back of each one. There we go, I've got her on her stand. And now we can check out our last set of accessories, starting with her little dance guide. So we see her on the front, and of course, once again, on the inside, where it says Miss Royale, fashion a la pose. And finally, the three steps to complete her dance move. And the back is pink and says LOL, OMG, dance, dance, dance. Just like the other dolls, she also has a brush. Hers is black, and it's gonna join the collection of things I won't be using on my dolls, which means we can move on to her hat box. And it's a semi-transparent white color. And we have white, pink, and black tissue paper, but there's actually two. So this first one has, <gasps> it's a fan. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a pink semi-transparent plastic. So we can kind of see through it. And on top we have a printed black pattern that looks a little bit like sunflowers, but I could be wrong. And this second one, and the second one has her little black light once again, which we'll be saving till the end. By the way, I haven't really pointed this out at all, but they look like little hairspray cans. And she also has jewelry, which includes these dangly black earrings with transparent blue bows and ribbons, and then a three-strand black pearl choker with a broken heart picture in the front. So I'll add those, and hopefully the earrings won't break. Oh, perfect. And of course, we will give her her necklace and her fan. There we go. Put her in the back. Oh, never mind. Okay, maybe we won't give her her fan. It's a little heavy right now. We'll just put it down. And we can move on to the very last accessory slash surprise, which just happens to be her garment bag. And it's a tiled pink and yellow pattern of some kind of Baroque filigree. I don't know what you call that. It's Victorian. <laughs> 
Ooh. And inside, we have a ruffled skirt that matches her sleeves. So it's that same sheer white fabric with the neon yellow, except this time it's got an elastic cord and a piece of Velcro at the back. And I don't see it on the packaging, so I'm not sure if it's supposed to go over her cage skirt or under it, but I'm gonna put it over it and call it a day. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't go here at all. Who knows? It seems as good a place as any. And here's what she looks like in her display box. Now that we're finished opening all four dolls, checking them out, putting them on display, and unfortunately breaking an earring, we can finally see them all together and appreciate all the colors, the various fashions, and of course, what each doll's style has to offer. There's really something for everyone. Unless, of course, the types of fashions the dolls are wearing aren't your jam. Because, you know, that's always an option too. Not everybody likes everything. But overall, I am really happy with everything that I opened today, and I am really excited to be adding them to my existing collection. Of course, there were a few flaws, but assuming that I can fix the shirt for Virtuelle and B-Girl's earring, I'll get over it. Now, as you can see, these dolls have so much to offer and are super gorgeous under regular lighting, but of course, each one also came with a miniature black light shaped like a can of hairspray. And I think you've waited long enough, so enjoy some shots of them in the dark while we check out what kind of features they've been hiding. And I'll wrap up by saying that hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and this super long, very in-depth look at the brand new LOL OMG Dance 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 Dolls. Like I said, I was really happy with them. I absolutely love this effect of what they look like underneath the black lights. And if you don't have the money to buy them or don't really want these specific dolls, I'll let you in on a little secret. All the existing LOL OMG dolls, in addition to the pets, littles, and baby sisters, also glow under black lights. Especially the the neon lights collections. Basically, the brighter their clothing, the brighter they'll shine in the dark. So think white, neon pink, yellow, green, or orange, and basically, it's a party. If you know somebody who would enjoy today's review, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video, which of the four dolls is your favorite, and if you know anything that I can do to fix B-Girl's earring, because I would really appreciate reading those comments. Oh, and also, don't forget if you haven't subscribed to the Great Big Toy Box channel yet that I will also be unboxing the Little Sisters as well as the new Dance 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 Machine car over there. So if you haven't yet, then follow the link in the description, hit subscribe, hit notifications, and then join the party. Yas! <laughs> as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.